Hello, everyone, and welcome to Super Podcast Action Committee, episode 121. If you saw my eyes glance down, that's because I had to look at my notes and see what the hell episode this is. So, Andrew Eisen here, and with me is E. Zachary Knight. Hello, Zachary. Hello, everybody. So, Hyrule Warriors, I am done. Finally? Finally. Well, I have one more thing to do. I have to, uh, when you collect, there are 100 gold sculptulas hidden uh, throughout the game. Well, they're not really hidden, uh, but you do have to do certain things to collect them. Uh, yeah. uh, each sculptula unlocks a portion of a picture and, uh, you know, little puzzles. So uh, if you collect 20, uh, 20 of the right sculptulas, you'll uh, form a portrait, which are very nice high-res portraits, and they look very nice. Uh, each portrait unlocks a new level. So if you collect all 100 golden sculptulas, you'll get five bonus levels. Uh, each one of them you can A rank. Uh, one of those extra levels is a boss rush, which is fight all of the giant monster, giant enemies at the same time, or three at a time. Okay. Um, I do have the only thing I've not done in this game really is A rank that one. I have a B rank on it, and I tried A ranking it this afternoon, but. Uh, my Wii U kept locking up, uh, and I did it twice in a row, and I said, well, I, I, it was not meant to be this afternoon, so I'll have to try it later. But yeah. I have uh, completed the Legend mode, which is the main 18 stages. I completed it again in Hard mode, because you have to, to get uh, 18 additional Sculptulas. And I completed, uh, found all the goodies, all the Sculptulas, and A-ranked all 128 Adventure Mode levels. Nice. Um, and have completed, but have not A ranked one of the five uh, uh, bonus reward map levels that you unlock with the sculptures. Um, so the guide is done. Now there are other things I could do in this game. There, there's also a challenge mode which uh, has one scenario in it. I was actually kind of surprised. It's only got one. Um, maybe there must will be quite more. the challenge. <laughs> um, it, it's. You, you enter the level, and uh, it says, go kill 500 enemies in three minutes. And you're like, okay. Now it says, kill 500 enemies in three minutes with a special attack. Okay. Kill 500 enemies in three minutes with folk, a magic attack. And it's like, all right. And so, so it keeps yeah. doing those, and then it grades you. Um, it, it gives you a rank on each individual task, but it doesn't seem to rank you overall. So, And challenge okay. mode is a whole separate section, and... There's just one thing in it. It's it's really kind of weird. Um, there are medals you can earn in this game. So if you uh, collect a million dollars in rupees, uh, you get a medal. Yeah, they're achievements. That's what they yeah. are, achievements. And uh, some of them are just, I am not, one of them I can't do because I'm not, I, I don't have any friends. One of them's help uh, <laughs> 10 networked links. I'm like, I have no one in my friends list. So that's that's not going to happen. Well, for you. A lot of them is, uh, you know, rescue an ally 500 times. I'm at like 270. Um, occasionally <laughs> when you're playing the game, some guy on the other end of the map will be, help, I'm dying, and if you want, you can run all the way over there and and essentially touch them to heal them. But And yeah. I, I normally do, but... Oh, man. So there are a few medals I haven't earned, but other than that, I'm... Did. And that's I. I'd have to look, but that's north of 150 hours. Probably will not take you that long. If you, it took me that damn long because I was writing IGN's guide. Um, but uh, <laughs> you know, if you, probably yeah. 80 to 100 hours to completely 100% this game. So yeah, that's more time than I have. <laughs> yeah, and that uh, well, I was paid to do that. That would stuff. take me like two years to do. <laughs> But uh, I, I really do like the um, I, I do like the game. I I have to wonder how much I'd like it if it if it wasn't Zelda themed. I think the Zelda theme <laughs> counts for a lot. But it, it really is. A, I, I'm really quite enjoying it. Uh, yes, it, it it is a grind. Um, I that it is. I played another hour of Steam World Dig and I stopped. Um, it's not bad. I don't hate it. I don't even really dislike it. It's just kind of tedious. Um, I, got, I got to an area where it's kind of a technological area, 
where there are uh-huh. robots. Yeah, that's the last world. world. Is yeah. that the last world? Uh, yeah. It's kind of weird because as you dig through the dirt, some of the dirt reforms above you, which makes getting back out if you didn't drag a teleporter down with you really tedious. Um, so I yeah, just that that can be that. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, uh, yeah that, that part like, was always fun. Yeah. So I maybe I'll I'll finish that game, but uh, so. All done with Hyrule Warriors. I'm, I'm going to A-rank the boss rush mode probably tonight, unless my Wii U keeps locking up. And then, um, like an idiot, I, I just accepted the contract for uh, LEGO Batman 3. <sighs> so <laughs> that's probably going to take a while, because there's probably four or 500 gold bricks and other damn things to find in that game <laughs> if uh, yeah, LEGO definitely. Marvel Heroes is anything to go by. So... What's been on your uh, games agenda this um, week? Well, uh, I played Angry Birds Epic this week. Oh. Um, I, I was just you know I was just downloading games on my uh, on on my phone and um, and uh, I, I was looking looking through the RPG section, the free the top free RPGs, and mm. Angry Bird Epic was on there. I was like Angry Birds. How in the world did they make a, a an RPG out of flinging birds across the map? I don't and know, I was like, yeah. this is pretty cool. Yeah, so I, I was just a, uh, so I I was like, okay, well I don't have an Angry Birds on my phone. This one looks new enough that it might actually you know be entertaining. And so I looked at I, I downloaded it, and it's not an actual Angry Birds game. Like, it's not a typical Angry Birds game. It's a, actually an RPG. You know, like a JRPG. It's, uh, it was very surprising. And, uh, you know, there, it, it, there's absolutely zero, uh, like, reading, unless you're reading, like, item descriptions and stuff. Like, everything is acted out in real time. Or, you know, just like in Angry Birds. Uh, you know, um, so all squeaks and squeals and stuff. Um... But uh, you know the game is very simple. You know you just touch the the bird you want to do an attack, and you drag it to the pig that you want to fight, and it does its attack. And then it's got uh, special moves. Like if you just tap the bird, it'll do some kind of defensive mood or move. Um, and then you could uh, touch the bird and drag it to one of one of the other birds in your party and do an assist move. And uh, and and then you just go go through the little story and try to. Uh, save all your eggs and beat up all the pigs and stuff and and uh, it's actually pretty entertaining. My I, I I let my son play it on my phone and he really liked it and so it's like as soon as we got home uh, from from what we were doing, he was like, "Can I download that onto my iPad?" And I was like, "Okay." And and he's like, he's been playing it tons. He's like way further into the game than I am, but I'm trying to go through and get three stars in all the battles. And he's just kind of going through the whole game, so he's got a bunch of one stars and two star battles. But I, I've almost all uh, three star battles so far, and uh, and so we've been talking about it the past couple of days. You know, it's just like, hey, have you done this? Have you done this? How far are you? Did you get this bird? And you know, and it's it's pretty cool. Uh, it's like they're. Um, You've got the. You start off with the red bird, just like in in a regular Angry Birds game, and he's your typical fighter, you know, sword and shield type guy. And then you and then you unlock uh, the yellow bird, and he's a wizard. And then the the white bird, she's a a, a healer. And then uh, I've got the black bird now. You know, he he was the big bomb guy in in the regular Angry Birds games. And he's just kind of a big bruiser in this one, so he he does powerful attacks, and uh, and like his special ability is exploding on all the monsters. And I haven't unlocked the the th- the the blue birds, the the little ones. I I don't know where they are, and my son hasn't gotten to those yet either. So I have absolutely no idea what they are. But uh, but yeah, it's. Um, uh, but yeah, so it, it's actually a pretty entertaining game. I, I think it, it would make a really great introductory RPG for for a young kid, um, you know, so, so that they're not reading, uh, playing something very text heavy like Final Fantasy or or Dragon Warrior or something. So if uh, um, so so yeah, it, it 
it, it definitely a good introductory RPG. Um, I guess uh, Matthew is asking uh, how the internet is since I moved. Um, we haven't uh, we haven't gotten internet here. We are using a um, a Verizon MiFi. It's a, a a mobile hotspot, and it, it's not too bad. It's like five gigs down and one gig up or something like that. Um, but uh, we are considering going with Cox because we can get both Cox and AT and T here. But Cox has like something like sixty bucks for fifty gigs down and five gigs up. So are these, are these giga? And that's what's... like gigabits, yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, and so, uh, so yeah, that that's that's like super super better than what we were getting at my last house and. Uh, but uh, for the same price as what we were paying for, uh, I think ten gigabits uh, at my old house. So, so that's a quite a quite a leap without having to pay any more money than we already are or already were. So. All right. Well, so. Uh, so that's. <laughs> as some of you know, I'm uh, uploading the. Um, Hour by each hour of my uh, extra life charity marathon stream to my YouTube channel, and uh, I'm on hour 14 now, uh, which was uh, Freedom Fighters, and I was going to release a new video today, <clears throat> and um, it got copyright claimed, and I thought, huh, maybe one of the songs in Freedom Fighters uh, is, is uh, it got claimed, and I looked at it. And uh, what happens is it says, this is the song, uh, it happens at this mark, click here to jump ahead into the video to where the song is, and then you can either um, dispute the claim, or you could possibly remove the song from the video while leaving the rest of the audio intact, which some of you may remember is something I pointed out in one of my own videos a month or two ago. So it is possible, yeah. Twitch. Um, oh, so sorry, I yeah. Uh... Megabits. <laughs> I don't know why I was saying uh, Matthew pointed out it was megabits, not gigabits, which is uh, insane if it was actually gigabits. <laughs> I would be, well, I was saying he can't possibly yeah. be bytes because that's no. I'm like bits, maybe. Well, I'm like yeah, okay. it, it's bits. It's bits, but it's uh, but not it's not me, gigabits, not which is what I was saying. It's megabits. Because um, yeah. yeah, gigabits is when you're getting into Google. Uh, the Google Fiber level stuff. Oh, maybe you had some Verizon Fios thing going there or something. I was like, whoa. Uh, yeah. uh, anyway, so I, 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 I look in the uh, portion of the video where uh, this song is uh, supposed to be, and there's almost no sound. If you've played or watched the stream, played the game or watched the stream, uh, when you when no one's shooting at each other, you're not during a cutscene where people are talking. It's a fairly quiet game where you're sneaking through the streets of. Uh, New York. The sound is mostly ambiance, and um, so, so somebody's I'm, claiming ambiance. Yeah, so someone's claiming ambiance, and my occasional interjections. And I went and I so I looked up what the song was, and it's a dun 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 kind of song, and I'm like, that's not in the game anywhere. So um, <laughs> instead of disputing the claim, which could take weeks and might not even work and end up with a strike against me anyway because if I dispute the claim they could just go no <laughs> yeah because this is just an obvious uh, content ID flub yeah uh, so what I did is I deleted and re-uploaded the video and uh, I'm gonna let it sit there for a little bit see if it gets reclaimed but so far it hasn't been claimed so I think that's just a content ID mistake so there you go. It's it's faster yeah. to delete and re-upload your... If there's a mistake, it's faster to delete and re-upload your video than it is to actually try and correct the problem. So, mm -hmm. uh, Matthew asked if we had seen the um, uh, South Park episode uh, this week, which was on uh, freemium games, free-to-play games. Uh, no, I, I didn't watch it. Uh, I do try to make it a point to watch the the South Park episodes that are uh, cultural touchstones like the uh, Guitar Hero one or the World of Warcraft one or, or, or the, the Mormon one, uh, the ones that everyone references. Um, yeah. 
I've had a really busy week at work, so I, I didn't get a chance to watch it. Plus, I was finishing up the Hyrule Warriors guide. So, but Zachary, you saw it. So, what did you think? Uh, Beelzebut is very hilarious. He's the Canadian devil. Oh, Canada has its own devil. <laughs> yeah, Beelzebut. <laughs> Beelzebut. <laughs> Lovely. Um, no, but it, uh, it it actually uh, it actually does a very good job at. Uh, <laughs> describing the whole Skinner box aspect of a lot of mobile games and you know and the whole uh, uh, money cycle and and uh, you know the 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 whale phenomenon where a minority of players produce the the majority amount of the money uh, that the game makes and uh, and so you know they, they talked about a lot of that and uh, you know they, they they touched on the whole um, uh, you know the uh, prom promotional aspect of the game, you know, where it's like you're constantly having to spam your friends. You know, they they didn't really you know have it have the game itself spam your friends, but they they uh, had one of the characters being paid to promote the game. Uh, one of the the one of the South Park school kids, he was being per paid to promote the game, which kind of uh, you know goes along with uh, what. Uh, you know what a lot of mobile games do. It's like, you know, share this game with your friends on Facebook, and we'll give you five hundred uh, bluggle butts or whatever. You know, the the in-game currency. Um, and uh, and then they also talked about how a lot of these, a lot of the mobile games that that rely on these Skinner box techniques and stuff are all really crappy games. You know, it's like the the game that they played in in uh, in there was just, you know, you're you're this in a little town, and you collect coins that appear around the town, and that's pretty much the whole thing. And and it's like you know they I guess there was like a uh, building mechanic where you could like build buildings, but uh, but you know it was just a really stupid game. But uh, but yeah, uh, so was, I I think they were pretty spot on with the criticisms. Like you know they were um, very relevant to a lot of the. Uh, a lot of the discussions around uh, in-app in payments and uh, and uh, you know Skinner boxing or, of, of the games and the um, the cycle of, of you know that that you play through the game where you, you spend what you can and then you have to wait and and then come back to the game later and so if, you know all, they they touched on pretty much all the all the the criticisms that mobile games get these days so very very entertaining uh, show um, I'm not a big fan of uh, of South Park but I had to watch that one just because I was just like I had time and everybody was talking about it so I was like yeah I'm gonna watch that. I me I totally meant to watch it. I, I just never uh, took the time. I, I probably will watch it though. Uh, sound, sounds good. Um, <clears throat> so okay. Um, Majora's Mask 3D for the 3DS was uh, announced. Uh, yeah, I saw that, and I, I thought that was pretty cool. I you know I I don't think it was unexpected. You know when it was they very they expected. Did, uh, yeah, you know they they did uh, they did. Uh, okay. Ocarina of Time, so it's just like sure, they you know they they've got to do Majora's Mask because everybody loves Majora's Mask, and uh, and so you know I I never played Majora's Mask, I've only played like a couple of hours of Ocarina of Time, so you know maybe one of these days if I get a three D three D S then then yeah I'll probably pick up both of those games. Yeah, well, you know, I have a 3DS thanks to the generosity of my YouTube viewers. Um, uh, but I didn't buy uh, the Ocarina of... It's Ocarina, actually. It's not a hard O. I did not buy Ocarina of Time 3D. I did not buy Wind Waker HD. And I almost certainly won't buy Majora's Mask 3D. And I love all the games, but the thing is, is I already own them on easily accessible consoles that are hooked up to my TV. So, you know. Yeah. Um, <laughs> also, yeah. I don't care to play uh, big games like Zelda uh at least, you know, Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask, I don't want to play it on the handheld. You know, I, I don't want to sit... I, I, I don't want to play these games on the handheld. Yeah. It, it, it's kind of like Monster Hunter 4. Oh, 
boy, howdy, am I excited for Monster Hunter 4. I'm drooling like an idiot over that, and I'm not going to get it because I have absolutely no interest in playing it on the handheld. I really don't want to play it that way, um, <laughs> which bums me right the heck out. Yeah. Um, that, that but does, uh, I that these games are coming back because they are phenomenal games, and uh, oh, they, they're great they're, games. Yeah, and they're old now, which makes me feel old. Um, yeah. See, see, I would like to get a hold of uh, the 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 GameCube uh, version of Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask because they they released those uh, limited edition packaged together, and I think my mom has a copy of it, actually. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I've been meaning to get a hold of that, uh, so that I could have it on, on, uh, on you know, to play on my Wii. But, the uh, the uh, one that's, um, <clears throat> that has the Master Quest on it, I not the one that has, like, four games on it, but the one that has o yeah. Ocarina of Time and Master Quest doesn't work it so well. Uh, it, it works. The, oh, really? the emulation is fine. It's because um, I started playing Master Quest and I got like halfway through the Deco Tree, which is the beginning of the game. Really, it's the first dungeon, and I stopped playing uh, mainly because when you hit the start button to go into the the menu, so you can select items and move stuff around, there's a, a nearly a second pause, uh, yeah. a second long pause, and it just that sounds really petty, I know, but that just drove me nuts. Um, so just uh, uh, be aware of that. And Adnex points out that um, uh, Ocarina of Time 3D has uh, Nintendo started development right after. Uh, I'm sorry, Majora's Mask 3D started development right after Ocarina of Time 3D released back in 2011. So they've been working on that for a while. So uh, and I read an interview saying that. Uh, it should be more than just a graphical update. They, they. I don't know if that means. Um, I would imagine it means nothing more than the types of, of gameplay tweaks and things that they did with uh, major. Um, yeah. Uh, Wind Waker HD. You know, uh, you know, adding the sail and uh, streamlining a few, uh, the the mm -hmm. speed sail and streamlining a few things. Um, but unless they radically change the game, you know, add dungeons and stuff. I, I've never, I've never really been into remakes unless they really alter the game, especially if it's a game I already own on a system that still yeah. works. But uh, for those who haven't played it, great game, can't go wrong. All right, now I, I do have to ask you. you, you the I, yesterday, or maybe the day before, you posted a an image of uh, the original Zelda map done like like HD and with with uh, you know a UI over it. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what was that? Uh, I should have hashtagged that Hyrule Warriors because a few people asked me what that was. That's the adventure mode in Hyrule Warriors. Uh, okay. <clears throat> it takes the original uh, NES uh, Legend of Zelda map, uh, which is uh, 8 by 16, 100, so 128. Uh, each one of those screens is its own mission which are about 15 minutes long, and there's 128. Oh, okay. And uh, what I was showing off is that I had A-ranked every single one, plus got all the spatulas, plus got all the heart containers and heart pieces and weapons and, and stuff. So I was, okay. just, I was just showing off that I... But I probably should have been a bit more explicit on what I was showing <laughs> off. Yeah, I, I just saw that, and I was like, wow, is Nintendo going to do an HD uh, remake of the original Zelda? <laughs> Because you know, to be honest, you know, if they did the original Zelda in, in uh, the Ocarina of Time 3D uh, engine, I would totally buy that. Um, you know, cause you're not going to have a lot of dialogue or anything, but just to, be able to go through the entire game and and using the Ocarina of Time uh, monsters and and everything and replay, you know, and and have it all 3D, that would be totally awesome. I, well, they, they should fully voice the remake of The Legend of Zelda. They should hire, hire <laughs> Nolan North uh, to record It's Dangerous to Go Alone. Take this. And it's a secret to everybody! Uh, <clears throat> yeah, definitely. <laughs> so, okay. So, the poll this week, which did I remember to close? Yes, I did. Okay. Uh, asks, will the U.S. Copyright Office grant a DMCA exception for video games that are no longer supported by their publisher? A very good question, if I do say so myself. I wrote that question. <laughs> um, but, Zachary, 
Can you explain to us what the heck the DMCA is and what magical thing happens every three years? All right. Uh, well, this uh, this whole process uh, of going to the the Copyright Office Library of Congress for an exemption to the DMCA all revolves around the um, the the asp- the part of the DMCA that involves circumventing uh, copyright protection software, so like DRM. Um, so if you have a, a movie, you know that has DRM on it, and and it's illegal to break the DRM in order to do whatever you want to do with the movie after you break the DRM. You know, the same thing is true for video games and and your phone and your car's computer and your Texas Instruments TI eighty six calculator. I have yeah. That. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, any basically any electronic device like you know it, it will have some kind of DRM preventing you from uh, messing with the software on it, and uh, and so it's illegal to break that in order to use personal devices, electronic devices that you own the way you want to use them. But uh, you know, Congress at at the time of writing the DMCA recognize that, you know, there might be some instances where somebody would have a legitimate reason for breaking that DRM in order to do something. And so rather than completely ditch or rewrite the, the, the circumvention laws, they decided to write in a process in which every three years, citizens of the United States can go to the Copyright Office and beg them for the right to use their electronic devices and electronic media in the way that they w- they want to use it. And it's literally a begging process. And so every three years, the, the Library of Congress and Copyright Office will review all of the requests and grant an exemption for the anti-circumvention law saying that it's okay to do this specific thing, break DRM in order to do this specific thing for the next three years. And in three years after that, those exemptions are washed away, meaning it's illegal to do those things that you were doing legally for three years, and you the whole process starts anew. So for the past three years, you're able to take your phone and and circumvent the DRM on your phone in order to take your phone to a different network. So, like, you know, I'm on uh, I'm on Sprint here, and if I wanted to take this phone and go to Verizon, well, maybe not Verizon, because I think Verizon used SIM cards. I can't remember. I can never keep them straight. But if I wanted to take this to another compatible uh, cell phone provider, I could break the DRM on this phone and, and go and, and, and do that. And that's how it's been for the past three years, but come in a couple of months, it's going to be illegal to take this phone and go to another carrier. I have to buy a brand new phone because it's now illegal to do something that I could have done for three years, which is incredibly stupid. Um, but so the EF, the Electronic Frontier Foundation uh, it sent in a request to allow the, uh, the breaking of DRM on old computer games, video games, in order to bypass... Uh, defunct DRM. So, like, if you have a game where the publisher no longer supports the DRM for that game, they shut down the servers, the EFF says, hey, people should be able to, to circumvent that DRM in order to play games they legally own that the publisher's not going to support. And uh, and so that's what the EFF is is uh, requesting. And and uh, from what... I, I'm trying to remember, but from what I know, I don't think at any point in history... Uh, uh, since the DMCA went into effect, has have they allowed the circumvention of video game DRM at any point? So, this if if they grant this, this will be the first time we are able to break DRM on video games, but only for old unsupported games, not for anything current. So, mm. but that's what's going on right now. <laughs> All right. So, will the U.S. Copyright Office grant a DMCA exception for video games that are no longer supported by their publishers? Uh, yes or no question. 107 people <laughs> voted. Uh, 44% said yes, and 56% said no. So, a little it's, it's pretty split, but a little over half. It seems to be a 50-50 as to whether <laughs> this is going to happen or not. Uh, looks like yeah, uh, Matthew in the... Uh, 
in the, the chat box <laughs> he says, hell no. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. I well, voted no you voted no. Yeah. Yeah, I voted no. Um, I, I'd I'm, love to uh, be wrong. <laughs> I would love to be wrong too, but uh, but the, the 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 copyright office has been very very stupid in the way they handle these exemptions. <clears throat> like they uh, they try to carve these things so narrowly that even if they did grant an exemption for this, they would probably grant it in such a way that uh, that you could only break the DRM on video games that are not supported in any way whatsoever by the publisher. So, like, if, say you have a 20-year-old copy of, um, of uh, let's see, what, what's a game that's 20 years old? You know, Baldur's Gate, you know, and, and there's, you know, there's DRM on it. But... Because that game is available on GOG, the, the, the copyright office is going to say, well, go buy the game on GOG, and not, you, you're not allowed to break that DRM. You know, the game ha- would probably have to be unavailable anywhere whatsoever in order to, to, to do that. And so I think, uh, I think if the copyright office were to grant such an exception, it would be that narrowly defined. So it can't be words. the fact that you own a game. Yeah, so <laughs> Go ahead. Um, no, you're not allowed to break the copyright on that game. Go buy another copy of it. Of yeah, <laughs> that, that's the own. way I would think they would they would carve it because the copyright office really listens to uh, the copyright industry, uh, and and so if the copyright industry says no, we're not happy with the way that is written, you know. That they will write it in a way that makes them happy, as well as pays pittance to uh, to us plebs and peons who uh, who have to beg for our rights to play games that we legally own. Mm. Yeah. So yeah, um, that, that's my thought. <laughs> Zachary uh, mentioned a, a Texas Instruments a TI eighty six calculator uh, a little bit ago. This is what it looks like if uh, if you've never seen it. This is the TI-86 that uh, I used in high school. Um, still have it, still works. Um, I, I used What's really it, sad I, is it's still, uh, it's still the required calculator for most, uh, most algebra and trigonometry courses in, uh, in college, too. Hmm. A, a I, 40-year-old calculator is still the, the, the go-to calculator for a lot of yeah. college courses. When I was in grade school, I got a TI-82, and I had that right up in, until high school. And I, um, you can program on this. You can make your own little custom programs. Um, and I yeah. made video games. I, I made um, <clears throat> I made little text adventures, real simple things like Russian roulette. You, you know, which would just be a random yeah. number generator, and you'd say, you know, click. And you, you'd hit the enter button, go click. Hit the enter button, click. Enter button, bang. <laughs> you know, to wherever the bullet was, and that was it. I also programmed a uh, really rough um, Mortal Kombat, which had uh, characters on either side of the screen made of uh, you know X's and zeros, um, and it was incredibly slow, but it did work, and it had fatalities, so it was pretty cool. And someone stole it. Someone stole my calculator. I oh, had my man. cable. I, I I would have transferred all my games over if that's what they were after. But someone stole my calculator, and uh, this was the the yeah, of the eighty six. Now, if I remember right, they had the uh, TI ninety two or something like that, which was a wide calculator with a really big screen on it. Um, I remember someone in uh, like seventh or eighth grade had that. It was pretty yeah. cool. So yeah. we were that's old. cool. <clears throat> but yeah, but uh, you know, in, in case uh, in case I wasn't clear before, or you weren't able to read the lines. I, I think this whole DRM uh, or DMCA exemption process is a complete waste of time and needs to just be scrapped entirely. You know, if they want to keep something like this in place, you know, I'm I, I think I think I would uh, survive in a world where where every three years you're allowed to present cases for exemptions. And and the copyright office can uh, you know grant such exemptions, but I think the only way I would be happy with this process is if those exemptions were permanent. 
Um, you know, the fact that they expire after three years, and so, you know, after three years doing something you were legally doing for three years is now illegal again, I think that's complete stupid and, and idiocy and needs to go right out of the out, out the window. So it, I, I could survive in a world with this process if those exemptions were permanent, but they're not, and, and that's what makes us see. The exemptions should ever. be um, available to uh, petition every three years, like, uh, you know, three years you petition for... Uh, or, or beg and plead for uh, ex exemptions, or you beg and plead to get some exemptions reinstated, although I don't know who'd do that, well, except uh, the IP holders. Yeah, you could, uh, you know, there's nothing stopping somebody from coming back and, and applying for the exact same exemptions that were granted before, but the chance of those being granted again uh, is pretty unlikely because the copyright only grants like six exemptions every every three years. It's like, you know, they don't even grant very many. It's like just a handful. And and I think they get like hundreds of, of different exemptions. Some of them are very similar, um, just worded differently or or a different take on an issue. But uh, but a lot of them are are very different and very uh, very uh, interesting things. Like the EFF is actually uh, one of their other exemptions that they're applying for is breaking the DRM on your car's computer so that you could fix your own car or go to a, a, a car shop that that's not an official uh, 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 repair shop for that car brand. Um, so so you know you could just take your car anywhere and get it fixed if it's if there's a problem with the computer. But uh, you know we'll have to see how that goes because. You know, there's a lot of car companies that would not want you tinkering with their 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 computers because their computers control a lot of things like uh, the speed controls and uh, you know uh, gas flow and intake and all that stuff. So you know they might not want you souping up your car so you could drive 200 miles an hour down the freeway. <laughs> it's like, but, but what if I can tinker with my car and get get a better gas mileage? Exactly. You know that that's another thing. It's like you could probably change something in the computer and get better gas mileage. But now Matthew brings up a uh, point that um, while the uh, jailbreaking exemption is going to expire, uh, doesn't the FCC uh, do something with uh, jailbreaking phones? Isn't that allowed under FCC rules now? Um, I don't know. I I'd have to look into that, but. Uh... Um, you know, he, he does qualify that as after contract. So, like, you know, you could, you know, get a phone under contract, but once your two-year contract expires, you know, you could carry it off to any other carrier you yeah, want. I, I'm I, pretty I'm sure not, he I'm not aware. I, I remember something like that, but, yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know for sure. I, I do, but I, I do know that uh, unlocking your cell phone in order to take it to another carrier is a current exemption under this process. Mm -hmm. So if uh, a law passed or a rule passed uh, during that the the past 3 years, I'm not aware of it. Um, but but the but you know just to to mention, you know, it's only legal to unlock your phone in order to take it to a new carrier. It's not legal to unlock your phone so that you can install whatever software you want. You know, to remove all the bloatware that that your carrier puts on the phone and all that stuff. That's still illegal. You know, so yeah, so there's I, that. My work upgraded my uh, BlackBerry to an iPhone, and it, it's got two pages worth of stuff mm -hmm. on it. It's got like a, a health icon. I don't know what it does. It's got a passport thing. Don't know what it does. It has stocks, which I don't care about. And I, they, they don't really yeah. bother me sitting there. I don't, I don't know if you can. Uh, I don't know if you guys can see this on my phone, but uh, this is my. Uh, app, this is the iPhone, apps. and this is. Huh. I see about but, ten apps on your. Yeah. Well, this is just the one screen, but uh, but this is um, you know I, I set it up so that I can actually delete apps on my phone. Someone's at my door. Keep talking. Okay, but there's little X's on here for for apps that I can actually delete. But there's certain apps that don't have that little X, like all of these ones, and pretty much everything in here. I can't delete any of these, even though I don't use them. It's like a stock 
uh, you know, a stock counter, a weather app, uh, you know, the iTunes store. You know, I don't use any of these things, and yet I can't delete them because because Apple has or Apple and Sprint decided that they want me to have these apps and uh, and they don't care about my sanity and and space on my phone. So, you know, I would love to unlock my phone and uh, and do this, and, and I, I know how. I just haven't gotten around to it, and uh, I don't really... I, I, I would rather lobby to make it legal than, than really just do it for some reason. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, probably worth noting that uh, the EFF itself has... Uh, six different things that it's um, uh, petitioning for, but it's also collecting uh, different exemption requests from other parties, and it has a list of uh, eh, almost 30, so um, a lot nice. of, there, there are a lot of, there's a big wish list of things, so a lot of kids They're are going to be disappointed be, this next three years. So, okay, let us move on to another topic. All and right. that is share play on the PS4. Zachary, do you have a PS4? No, I do not. Not I... either. Yeah. Moving on to another topic. <laughs> um, this is a story I was actually going to write for Game Politics on Thursday, but I was busy, so I was going to write it on Friday, and I was still busy, and I really didn't feel like doing it on the weekend. So we're going to talk about it on the show. So, uh, share play, from what I understand, is a way to, um, <clears throat> uh, over the internets, uh, to share a game you're playing and have the disc for, or downloaded, uh, with someone else, somewhere else, who has a PlayStation 4, uh, that they can watch you uh, play the game as a spectator, and can even uh, take over control uh, of the game, even if they don't own a copy of it. And... Um, what this is for is one of the uh, selling points is if you're playing a game and you're stuck, you, hey, uh, Julie, can you get me unstuck within this part of uh, um, uh, Halo 5? And Julie would be like, oh, okay, and you do share play, and she goes, da 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 kaboom, there you go. And, uh, you know, that, that's a, kind of the it's selling It's an point. online version of passing the controller to your big brother to be a, a bit... Hard boss for you. Get, get me, get me through this level. It's, get me through this level too. It's like Kelly, do you, do you just want me to play the whole game or what? Um, it has a, from what I understand, it has a sixty-minute timer. But as soon as it times out, you can just reinitialize it. Now, um, uh, Sony did say that uh, it, there would be some type of uh, ability for uh, the the publishers or developers to lock out certain things from being shared. Uh, for spoiler concerns, which makes no damn sense, but uh, okay. Well, uh, it, it it appears that uh, Activision thinks that the entire the entirety of uh, Call of Duty Advanced Warfare for everything but Wii U uh, is spoilers <laughs> and is not allowing share play on any of it. Um, and that, that sounds like the Activision thing to do. Yeah, uh, Sony did the 2.001 or 2.00 update uh, a couple weeks ago, and that introduced SharePlay, and they had an interview with GameSpot, and uh, they said, yeah, GameSpot, and, <laughs> and they said uh, there is absolutely no function in here for developers to opt, opt out of, um, <clears throat> of the SharePlay. Turns out that's not exactly true. Because uh, Activision has opted out of all of it, and according to uh, some, I think Kotaku readers, uh, Call of Duty Ghosts, which actually is on the Wii, uh, is exempt from. Is also uh, uh, not SharePlay does not work with that either. So um, let's see who uh, Activision uh, delivered the following quote. They said, uh, "Delivering a great gaming experience for fans is our top priority." We're focused on launching Advanced Warfare and ensuring that people have a great time playing it, which our fans seem to be. 
SharePlay is a new feature that was introduced as part of the recent uh, PS4 for firmware 2.0 update. Our engineers didn't have access to it before it launched, so we haven't had a chance to evaluate it to see how it will impact the experience across all modes of play. Of course, we wouldn't include a feature in our game without having the chance to test it. Once we've <laughs> fully analyzed its performance, we'll determine how to support it going forward. So the way um, Activision is framing it is, is it's a new feature. We didn't test it, so we just locked it out just in case it exploded the world or something, which I don't <laughs> buy for a minute. Well, I of course, think, this is Activision we're talking about. You know, I think guys... Activision is not... I, they're, they're like, you know what? 16 million copies of uh, Call of Duty Advanced Warfare is not enough. You know, if we allowed people to share it, we might sell less copies, so um, let, let's lock that out. Or maybe, yeah, maybe I, I this, the story is just so amazing that you have to experience yourself, <laughs> experience it yourself, and you can only experience it yourself if you buy a, your own copy. <laughs> Hi, real nice fan who just showed Yeah. Up. Um, you know, I, I, I do remember reading something about this on Kotaku, and, and one of the comments came up that, uh, you know, perhaps, you know, some of, the, some of the publishers don't want to allow this because somebody might play the game without actually buying a copy of the game. You know, they'll, they'll just, wor you know, you know, they know somebody who has the game, and they're like, yeah, just share play it with me, man, and... You know, and they, they try to beat the game share playing it, but it doesn't sound like it's going to be uh, all that uh, easy to do, uh, you know, to play an entire game through share play. But, uh, but again, you know, that, that kind of ignores the fact that you could just go to your friend's house and borrow a copy of the game and take it home and play it without having to buy it. Um, or you which rent it or buy it used. Yeah. Or, but, you yeah, know. exactly. You know, it just... You know, there's a lot of ways to, to play a game without having to buy it, and uh, so I, I don't understand why somebody, why a publisher wouldn't allow this to go through because it's mainly just a, a spectator thing. It's you know, you know just uh, I, I don't really see how it could be anything but spectator, um, you know, a spectator feature. Um, you know, other than the, you know, other than, hey, that looks cool. Let me try that for a sec. You know, and and passing the controller off. You know. Yeah, but, I uh, I think Activision just doesn't want you playing its game without you paying for it. Yeah, I think so. But yeah, I but I'm just of the opinion that uh, you know I, I like I like the concept of Twitch and and things like that because you know there are times when I just want to watch somebody else play a game. You know, it's like, you know, I've tried playing the game, I, 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 I like, I want to see the game played, you know, and, and see the game finished, but I don't have time to finish it myself, or or I suck at the game. You know, like, uh, take uh, um, Uncharted, you know, I, I really suck at playing the game, and I would just like, you know, I, I probably would enjoy just watching somebody else play it and, and let them beat the game for me. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I, but... Yeah, it's just you know some publishers just don't seem to like that, and and to be honest, Sony is is also a problem because they have their uh, what's that DHCP lock on their consoles, mm -hmm. where, where you can't you can't go through a capture card over HDMI. You have to use the uh, the uh, the um, component cables uh, in order to use a, a capture card. Which is really annoying and stupid, and everybody hates it. But Sony seems to think that's the the most awesomest thing ever, and and they do it mainly for their their movie division. Um, but uh, because you know the they don't PS3 want you playing a Blu-ray and capturing it with your capture card and then yeah. uploading it to YouTube. But for some reason, they can't update their firmware to turn off DHCP when a game is playing and turn mm -hmm. it back on when a movie is playing because they're totally separate apps on the PS3. You know, this you've got your, your movie playing app over here and you've got your game over here. It's like you could very easily separate DHCP uh, between the two, but no, they just keep it on by default all the time. <laughs> Oh, you can dis disable uh, the oh, HD 
CP, whatever it's it is. CP, yeah. You, yeah, but you can turn it off uh, on the PS4. That's cool. Cool. Yeah, because yeah, uh, the first time I heard about the uh, HTCP thing is uh, with uh, my capture hardware. Uh, which the instruction booklet is very specific. It says, now, if you're using a PS3, you're going to have to do this because of this. And I was like, really? <laughs> so, so. Yeah. Glad, that's, uh, glad that's fixed with the PS4. Now, maybe they'll get on yeah, backwards good. compatibility. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, okay, new topic. And, uh, oh, this is... This is a fun one. So uh, there is a company called Glue Mobile, whom I've never heard of. And Glue Mobile is suing Hothead Games, whom I've also never heard of. Um, <laughs> There's so many mobile developers that it, it's not surprising to, to learn about a new one every single day, multiple times a day. <laughs> yep. Because with millions so, of apps released every year. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so hopefully I don't get this backwards. Uh, Glue... Uh, made a game called Deer Hunter 2014, which is a mobile game where you kill deer in 2014. Um, so it's not a period game. Uh, Hothead Games made a game called Kill Shot, and according to Glue, Kill Shot is exactly the same game, except you kill people instead of deer. Don't know if it takes <laughs> place in 2014 or not. But uh, Glue uh, says... Glue uh, Mobile Shot is a developer of Kim Kardashian's game. The, the so Kim Kardashian game that out there. Hollywood? Yeah, Hollywood game. Wait, <laughs> Just Glue, to throw that Glue, out there. Glue is or Hothead Games is? Glue is. Yeah, oh. Glue made that one. Or Glue, don't you have enough money? That's like, the, that's like the hottest <laughs> absence. Flappy Bird and Angry Bird. and If it was called Kim Kardashian Bird, it would probably be even... More popular, but anyway, Glue says yeah, Kill Shot is effectively for other games that I can recognize here. Yeah, but yeah go uh, ahead, continue. It says Kill Shot is effectively a complete ripoff of our game Deer Hunter 2014. The only difference <laughs> is that in Kill Shot you are shooting humans, in our game you are shooting deer and other animals. Now, in the lawsuit, they actually have some uh, compare and comp uh, screen side by side screenshots, and I have to say. The games look nothing alike. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm like, um, what? I'm like, man, couldn't you guys have like picked screenshots that were at least a lot closer? Yeah, it's uh, like one of these. Okay, one of them is shots fired, muzzle fires. You know, muzzle. Yeah, I don't know why they call it muzzle fires because everybody knows it's a muzzle flash. And but it doesn't look have... like the same animation either. No, but it's just like you know. Oh, there's a gun, and little flames spurt out the end of it when you shoot your bullets. Like, that's a thing guns do. How in the world is that a, a ripoff of, of your game? I'm sorry, it's stupid. Now, it also has a uh, comparison of the bullet time animation of a bullet flying through the air. Um, think uh, Sniper Elite, and wonder why they're not mm -hmm. suing Sniper Elite, <laughs> which actually came out... Before this, so that's uh, probably... Sniper Elite? Okay, mm -hmm. I, I don't know what Sniper Elite it's is. It's a sniper but... game, and it's one of the games where you, you fire a gun and the camera follows the bullet, and yeah. it does an internal cam, kind of like Mortal Kombat, uh, the, the new yeah. one did. Well, uh, Glue Mobile has a game now called Contract Killer Sniper, so... <laughs> Take that one. It is uh, the other. The third screenshot <laughs> comparison shows a deer being shot in the side with a blood splatter, and some dude getting shot in the head with a blood splatter. And they don't really look like the same blood splatters. Uh, I, I don't know if they're calling like we own muzzle flashes and bleeding or what. This but... is basically the same thing as the mu muzzle flash. It's like oh, you shoot a living thing and blood comes out of it. They're ripping us off. That's no <laughs> matter. That's exactly what that is. So, um, <laughs> however, it does um, uh, point out a couple other things. Uh, it says, uh, it alleges that Hothead Games copied the marketing tutorial, user interface controls, virtual, con virtual economy, pricing of items uh, of Deer Hunter 2014, 
Uh, it copies and it copies some of Deer Hunter 2014's errors and mistakes, including a miscategorized assault rifle. So the same miscategorized assault rifle is miscategorized the same way in Kill Shot. And he also says that 18 of the 21 steps in Deer Hunter's tutorial appear in uh, Kill Shot's tutorial. That, might, if that's true, that may be something, but uh, these I mean, things really don't look alike um, to me. Well, there, there was a very similar lawsuit, um, uh, trying to remember the games now, but uh, like two, uh, they're, they're uh, match three town building type games. I forget mm -hmm. what they're called now, but like one of them was Yeti Town and Tiny, and Tiny, Tiny Town, town or something like that. <clears throat> yeah. But uh, there was a whole lawsuit over that, but that one was settled out of court, and there was a lot of other stuff going on with that one, because apparently the publisher of, of the Yeti one had access to to the the source code of the other game, and and they you know the the lawsuit kind of went around some contract disputes and stuff too, so I wouldn't really consider that to be. Um, you know, uh, uh, now I forget the legal word for that. <laughs> um, but uh, well, no um, precedent. You know, I, precedent. I wouldn't consider that case more precedent of this. Hmm. But uh, but there's also the the Sims mobile game. You know, EA sued some other company that made a a, a sim like app uh, or a sim like hmm. game, and uh, you know they did the whole screenshots and comparisons. I don't remember what the resolution of that case was. I think it may actually still be in court, but I'd have to double check. But uh, I, in that case, EA had a, a much stronger case of potential copyright infringement just because the games themselves were so similar. Uh, in in but, some aspects, yes. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but this one... The games are just so, so distant and far from each other. It's just, you know, it's like, how different can you make a shooting game? You know, it's like, mm. you know, I, I look at all the first-person shooters out there, you know, um, and uh, they're, you know, to me, you know, I to play first-person shooters. I think they're all the same. I couldn't tell you the difference between Battlefield and Call of Duty, you know, I you know, you show me a screenshot of either one that doesn't have the name of the game in it, I couldn't tell you which one was which. Yeah. You know, um, you know, same for a lot of the the uh, the futuristic themed ones. You know, they they all look the same to me. Um, so it's just you know, putting two screenshots next to each other, you know, doesn't convince me at all. You know, I would have to actually watch the games being played in order to you know to make a, a characterization and. I'm not going to download these games just to try them out and see if they're actually the same, because they both look stupid and, and not at all interesting to me. Well, th my thought is that um, these pictures uh, that, uh, that are in the uh, the lawsuit have got to be their best foot forward. You know, their most damning evidence that this game is a ripoff. And if that's really the best they can come up with, I'm thinking. Yeah, <laughs> that's 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 pretty weak sauce, guys. Um, yeah, and and to be honest, a sniping game, a hunting game like this, they they're old. You know, they they have been around forever. Uh, you know, I, I uh, Gamma Sutra had an article about this, and and uh, and they people there were listing off games that that came before it that were exactly like these ones. And they also listed a bunch of games that Glue Mobile ripped off of other people. It's like, yeah, this game that Glue Mobile made came out after this other game that somebody else made that's pretty much the same game. And, you know, it's like, so Glue Mobile's just kind of uh, being a bit hypocritical here, you know, in that on that case. You know, but. I think Activision and EA should sue each other for copyright infringement over Call of Duty and uh, a Battlefield. Battlefield. And they, yeah. they can say, look, we put all these screenshots next to each other, and no one can figure out which game is which. See, they're copying us. No, they're copying us. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's just, yeah, that, that's that's the way I you know I see this. You know, I'm I'm of the opinion that uh, you know I I don't think 
cloning is as big a deal as a lot of people make it out to be. Mm -hmm. Sure, there are those those rare occasions, like say uh, uh, threes in twenty forty eight. You know, threes came out first, and then twenty forty eight came out, and everybody made a big deal out of twenty forty eight, and and it got to be really popular. And and threes, you know, di you know, kind of just fell in the way, you know, uh, on the wayside, and and very few people recognized it or, or knew what it even existed. You know, there are those occasions, but you know, to me, that's just a risk that, that you 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 take when you introduce a game. Uh, you know, because you know, you could you could release a game and and some other game, you know, something totally different from your game could uh, take your thunder away, and and uh, you know, people just forget about your game. You know, it's it, you know, just because a game was very similar to yours was released and did that, you know, doesn't make it any different, as far as I'm concerned. Next Gen Vixen uh, says Nintendo should sue itself for copying <laughs> its own games and re-releasing them. <laughs> you know, I did. There was a uh, commercial series, I think, with uh, uh, Coke or Pepsi suing itself. Uh, <laughs> You know, because it had Coke and New yeah. Coke or something like that, and it's like we're suing ourselves because New Coke tastes exactly like regular Coke. So we're it was pretty <laughs> funny. Um, okay, last topic of the evening, and uh, <clears throat> oh goody, more violent video game research. But this comes from our friend uh, Chris Ferguson, who um, who is our friend because he says things we want to believe. And we're not friends he with says people things we think. like. That's right. <laughs> if you say things we like, we like you. If you say things we disagree with, burn in a fire. <laughs> that rhythmic thumping I hear in another apartment better be hammering. <laughs> um, you better be building a bookshelf over there and tell you what. So anyway, okay. So uh, we've actually got two uh, different studies. Uh, the first looked at um, <clears throat> uh, graphic violence in popular movies from 1920 to 2005 and compared that data with homicide rates for the same years. And it found that overall movie violence and homi uh, homicide rates were not correlated. Uh, it did match up a little bit in the mid-20th century, but uh, after 1990, uh, it flopped all over the place again. Uh, yeah. So, uh, and it, that's movies. For video games, which have not been around as long, uh, it took uh, ESRB ratings to estimate the uh, type of violent content that was in the, the games from 1996 to 2011 and compared that to uh, youth violence uh, rates, uh, data on youth violence rates. And it found out that uh, not only was there no correlation, but youth violence has been dropping as violent video games have uh, become more popular, more ubiquitous, and dare we yeah. say it, more graphic and more violent. Of course, they're qu quick to point out that this is not th this is not to say that video games are causing a decline in youth violence. They're Who just knows? saying there's no connection. Yeah. yeah the, basically, to kind of visualize it, you know, what they're saying is, you know, here's here's movie violence, here's real life violence. You know, if there was actually correlation, you know, you would see both rise as a uh, you know as one rises, the other one rises. You know that that's what that's what you would expect, but but in reality, you know, move violent that year, and you know, real life violence would fall, and there would be ups and downs on both of them, and they would hardly ever match. And the same thing happens with uh, you know video game and 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 youth violence. Is just there's you know no no way to match up the 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 two the two rates and and. Uh, and which, you know, to be honest, isn't all that surprising. This has been a, a well-known fact for many years, and you know, it's good to see a great, you know, a study like this come out that that not that doesn't just look at video games, but also looks at uh, you know movie violence as well, because you know, I I think that throws a lot of uh, of weight behind this study, because it's because it says you know has this other reference point. For people to look at, and it's and it's a longer reference point too. That's a uh, 80 years there, 85 years of of uh, information there, and you know, and compared to the video games industry's uh, what 
15. What's that, 15 years? Yeah. You know, so so you could, you know, it, it. I think that throws a lot of weight and make it, uh, you know, definitely something that uh, <clears throat> that people would be less likely to ignore or or say doesn't matter or or you know, <laughs> yeah. So I, I think that's I think that's really good that that they did that. Yeah, my favorite part of the study is actually the title of the study, which is called "Does Does Media Violence Predict Societal Violence?" It depends on what you look at and when. Yeah, <laughs> I love that title. Exactly. Um, yeah, uh, Next and Vixen says it's not the video games; it's the darn rock and roll kids listen to these days. <laughs> yeah. Or rap music, if you uh, talk to Jack Thompson. I, I don't know. Megan Trainer keeps uh, it ma makes me <laughs> mad. I keep hearing her dumb song. I'm like, argh. Any anytime I listen to Taylor Swift, I want to kill somebody. Mm. But mostly Taylor Swift. Um. <laughs> <laughs> you make it stop. Um, yeah. It's um, like and then there's a you know I I I'm a very I I'm very much a. Uh, um, I, I very much agree with Weird Al when it, it comes to don't play that song, that achy breaky song, because mm -hmm. I might just blow up my radio. You know. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, you know, the problem is, is uh, I work out in uh, gyms and studios, and the radio is always playing in, in a, a gym uh, or gym studio, and not like there's a huge difference between the two. <laughs> But um, so I hear the top forty all the time, and it's—I I know I'm a music snob, but oh, it's so crap. And it's—it's <laughs> it, it's like there are only ten songs in existence at any given time. Mm -hmm. And uh, Megan Trainor is uh, um, all about that bass, which I thought she was talking to me, and then I listened to the lyrics of the song, and that's uh, not what she's—she's she's talking about her bottom. And she didn't really think <laughs> through her metaphor at all. Because uh, she says, I'm all about that bass, about that bass, no treble. And I said, what's the treble? What are you talking about? That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> and I appreciate her, the message <laughs> I think she's going for, which is uh, pro-body image, mm -hmm. which, is a, which is a wonderful message. And uh, But she completely muddles it through half the song by, uh, you know, conflating body image with desirability. Yeah, you know, she says, um, let me see if I remember the lyrics. Um, uh, you know, don't worry about your size. Guys like more booty to hold at night. And we could debate the merits on whether that's true or not or how that, you know, we could do a study and, you know, survey a lot of guys. But what I'm thinking is the first part is good because you're saying, you know, don't worry about your size. You, you know, you are. You are your own person. It doesn't matter what you look like. You're still a worthwhile person. And then the next line says, but only if you are desirable to a man. <laughs> you know, don't worry about your size. You're still desirable yeah. to men, and that's the important thing. That's what <laughs> makes you valuable and relevant. I'm like, no, no, you're screwing <laughs> it up. At least that's my read on the song. Uh, overall, I... Uh, Real Next Gen Vixen says treble is supposed to be small butts, but it's a lame song and a lame metaphor. Okay, so <laughs> so bass and treble are okay. So bass is big butts and treble is little butts. Huh? That's so simple. I actually never thought of that, but it's still lame. <laughs> it doesn't work. <laughs> oh. Uh, going back in the yeah. box here, Adnex says, uh, I don't have a problem with games being similar as long as the games offer something different. Yes, uh, <laughs> Call of Duty and Battlefield are very similar games, but they actually offer very different styles of the same concept. And that's true. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, what else did I hear? I heard, uh, I think, Flowrider featuring, uh, oh, what's it, Keisha. Uh, the... Uh, uh, you spin me right around, baby, right around. When you go down, when you go down, down. And I'm like, and, and I started listening to the, listening to the. I'm saying you're butchering a fun '80s song, and uh, I think it's '80s. <laughs> and I listened to the lyrics, and I'm like, what the hell is he talking about? And so I talked to my friend Nahid, and I said, do you understand what this song's talking about? She says, yeah. He's at a strip club and he's throwing money at the dancers. And I went, really? And so we go to a computer and we, we pull up the lyrics to the song. 
And not a single line in that entire song makes a lick of grammatical or syntactual sense. <laughs> he had to explain line by line every single lyric in the entire song. I'm like, there's slang and then there's just bad English. Yeah, that's that's great. Um, but uh, going back to to Adonex, you know, I, I I did trash on on first person shooters a lot there and and stuff. But I, I will say this, okay? There there are two first person shooters that that really look interesting that that I might give a try, and one of them is Team Fortress Two, and the other one is Blizzard's clone of Team Fortress Two, uh, Overwatch, which they announced this weekend. <laughs> Um, it looks to me, to me looks exactly like Team. I watched the thing. I'm like, it's Team Fortress Two, just with different characters. Which, which yeah, is not, I, I think the characters look great. You know, I, I you know, I, I, I haven't actually watched any of the, uh, the any actual footage from the game. I just watched the the big animated intro trailer with the kids at the museum and stuff. Oh, um, just that. Uh, just that was entertaining enough. I was like, you know, I want to watch a movie of this. Because this looks like really cool-looking future G.I. Joe type stuff. You know, it's like where each character is its own, has their own personality and, and you know, its style of fighting. You know, it, it looks like a, a, a really cool version of G.I. Joe. And, and I, I think that... Uh, Insofar as I their think... guns seem to be completely useless. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Like, the gorilla guy is a. Uh, the, the gorilla guy is like you know. Hi kids, you know. Let me adjust my glasses. How are you? Enjoying your day at the. And all the while, the sniper person is like. Pew, pew, pew. He's like pink, pink, pink. I'm like. D- do you have dirt clod in your gun? What is it? He doesn't. He seems to be slightly annoyed. These are slightly. Yeah. Annoying. I mean, I think the world would be a better place if guns did nothing more than slightly annoy people. But um, <laughs> it was hard to get invested in the stakes yeah. of this epic battle when the guns didn't seem to do a damn thing. Yeah, they um, they, they weren't doing much. But uh, I I will say when uh, when the bad guy stepped on the gorilla's glasses and he went all berserker on him, that, that was, was awesome. I, I thought that was cool. I didn't like that. <laughs> Um, and and I and I also say this that I totally expected that kid to pick up the gauntlet and use it. But... It was pretty obvious, but yeah. it, it was still fun. I did watch the um, the other six minute video, uh, which introduces all the characters and how they play. And the individual characters are very different from the uh, Team Fortress Two characters, which is good. Um, yeah. And it's inter- Blizzard, right? Yeah, it's Blizzard. Yeah. Uh, what is really interesting to me is uh, that Blizzard is, uh, along with a lot of other uh, developers out there, is really trying to be more diverse. And, oh, yeah. Uh, Just and that one video I watched had two female characters in there beating each mm-hmm. other up. So. There's and about... Really well yeah, there's 10 or 12 uh, characters, that, at least that they've introduced so far, and about half of them are women. Uh, so you've got about half men, half women and a gorilla. Uh, like, two of them are robots. Um, you've got a variety of uh, ethnicities. You've got light-skinned folk and dark-skinned folk, which is good. The, uh, uh, But I also appreciate, I read a review, uh, interview in uh, Kotaku, I think, uh, and he says, you know, we're making a concert effort to be more diverse. Gaming is huge, and it involves a lot of people, and we want to appeal as many people as possible. And he says, we still have room to grow yet. Um, in the diversity aspect, and uh, yeah, it does. Because while I appreciate the fact that the, you know half the cast is women, they're all the same body type. <laughs> that is not, interesting. Not, not they're not overdone. They're actually surprisingly hippie. Yeah, you know, they're um they're almost uh, they, they've got a more pear shape. It, it's interesting. Yeah. They're um well, like the, uh, the 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 British the British uh, good good. Guy character uh, in, in the in that one video, you know she, mm-hmm. you know, a very realistic body type, you know, and and that that's what uh, you know I, I saw in that, and it, because yeah. it wasn't like giant breasts and and uh, you know, three inch waist and stuff, you know, it was actually somebody that you could you could see walking past on the street, and and I I think that's a good first step, but you know, um. <clears throat> I remember uh, several years back, uh, um, uh, 
uh, game game career guide. Uh, it's kind of a, a educational site that's owned by Gamma Sutra, but they they do occasional uh, you know they they do weekly design uh, things and you know where students can can uh, present designs and stuff. And one of them was uh, you know one of one of the the design tests they did the design. Uh, things was uh, take an existing character or a cast of characters and gender swap them, and uh, and and the winner of it uh, did Team Fortress Two, where they took the Team Fortress Two and they gender swapped it, where that you know the the the, the person who did the de- the character designs made it so that um, you know Team Fortress Two has the whole body type thing where it's mm-hmm. like you could spot you know, a shadow of somebody they and know exactly who you're. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, and so the person who designed the female characters did kept uh, you know kept true to those body frames. So you know if you can if you saw the silhouette of a, a male heavy and a female heavy, they would look very similar, and you could tell that they're both heavies. And the same thing for the the you know the sniper and the the scout and all that, mm-hmm. and very well designed characters. And I was like you know. Uh, Valve is is incredibly stupid and and missing a, a a great opportunity to to hire this person to help design those characters and introduce them as an update to Team Fortress Two. None of the characters in Team uh, Fortress Two are women, are they? Yeah, there's there's zero women in Team uh. Fortress Two. They're all men. Uh, I I didn't I want to back up a bit. Uh, overkill, oversight, over Overwatch. Um, oh. I, I mentioned that all the women have the same body type. It's not a bad body type. I don't think it's over sexualized. Yeah, not yeah, they're all they're all wearing skin tight outfits for the most part. Uh, one's in armor, but uh, you can still tell. Um, <laughs> you know, I'm not saying it's a bad body type. I'm just saying all the women have the same body type, and that's just boring. You know, more variety. You know, you know the men have. You know, you have the uh, uh, the samurai guy who's. Looks a little thick around the middle. You've got a gorilla guy. You've got a, a robot guy. You've got you know you've got all you know short, tall, wide. You know you've got the dwarf character. You know, but all the women yeah. are pretty much this. You almost think they, they, it's the same character model almost. Yeah, I'm, um, I'm going through this and and yeah, it's like uh, Kotaku has has uh, a GIF of all the characters and mm-hmm. and then a video uh, of them. Playing and I'm looking at this and I'm, I'm seeing exactly what you're saying. You know, every single one of these characters, you know, all the men characters are very different, and then and then the women characters, they all have the same narrow waist, large hips. You know, but you know, it, but like you said, you know, none of them are really over over sexualized. They just all, mm-hmm. yeah, they do all have the the, the, sim- the snipers. You know, unzip down to here, but uh, you know, it's not like you can't have a sexualized character in a game. That's fine. You know, having yeah. them all sexualized is a problem. And, you know, again, to their credit, it's obvious that they're going for it. They're trying new things. They're pushing in a direction, and they recognize themselves that there's still room to go, and that's great. You know, it's, it's really yeah. wonderful to see that. I also like the fact that I read these characters' bios, and they're all adults. Not only, not only uh, I, I think, uh, you know, two of the, one, of, one of the women's 26, one of the women's 28, the rest of them are in their 30s. You know, one of my thing is 36 and 38, and it's like, holy crap, we've got a, not only do we have a woman, a playable female character in the game, but one that's pushing 40? <laughs> When's that <laughs> ever happened? That's great. Well, and, you know, and, and uh, you know, to, you know, in, in, you know, to explain that, you know, the, the, that intro video talked about how, you know, they were these elite fighting forces that, that brought peace to the world, and now it's several years later, and you know, many years later, and, and they're all just, you know, mercenaries now because they don't have any other job to do. And so, so yeah, I could see this being, you know, ten years after they they, they fought in this multi-year war or whatever. Yeah. You know, Overwatch, to, to bring peace, bringing so. peace one bullet at a time. Sounds like the, uh, <laughs> the, the, the robot from uh, uh, Day of the Earth Stood Still. You know, Michael Rainey comes out uh-huh. and he's like, we've been watching you and you guys kind of suck. And you're all violent, and you do wars, and that's not cool. So if you don't be nice to everybody, we're gonna kill all of you. <laughs> it's like what? <laughs> so I love that movie. Yeah. Um, but uh, I watched the um, the character intro video before I watched the Pixar-esque little mini movie one, 
And when mm -hmm. the sniper is introduced, he goes, one shot, one kill. Thank you! And, you know, that's one shot, one kill. And then I watched the little Pixar mini movie, and her bullets don't do a damn thing. I'm sitting there going, <laughs> one shot, one kill, huh, lady? Uh, uh, Matthew says, uh, am I kidding? The guy that drops the teleporter in the and turrets is the engineer from Team Fortress 2. Yeah, there are some crossovers and similarities. Absolutely. Um, yeah, definitely. A and lot and of, it also lot points of... out that the, that the reason all the characters are... there's one, one of the robot characters is 20, the next youngest is 26, and they go up and, <laughs> and he says it's because you know yeah. Japan loves to put minors in danger in their entertainment. That's true. If you watch a lot of anime... Um, uh, most of the characters all, are, yeah, are all 14, 15, 16, and it, you, you, yeah. get, you finally see an adult character, and you're like, oh, I forget which... Well, it's, like, uh, you know, it's like that for a lot of RPGs, too. You know, like, um, you know Breath of Fire, and mm -hmm. uh, you know that one is you know a kid you know going out on adventure, and they're usually you know teenagers. Yeah, um, wakes up in bed, his mom says, come on, or the precocious neighbor girlfriend, come on, sleepyhead, wake up, and then the village is destroyed, your parents are killed, and you go out on an adventure, and it's like, oh, it's the same damn thing every time. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, there's an anime, I think, called Silent Mobius, where most of the characters are adults, which I was like, the show isn't even that great, it's okay, but I, I watched it, and I was like, holy crap, there's actually adults in anime, who <laughs> knew? So, we are yeah. way off track and off topic, but uh, one thing I want to point out is while you may have trouble differentiating Call of Duty and uh, Battlefield from mere screenshots, you certainly aren't going to have that problem with a screenshot of Splatoon, now are ya? <laughs> no, not at all. Another Splatoon game, definitely looks a lot yeah. of fun, too. Another game that we pointed out at E3 was, uh, was another example of uh, publishers... Seemingly getting the you know this whole diversity thing is important. We we do need more female characters, not all female characters, just more. <laughs> you know, and yeah. uh, they came out with the Squid Kids or whatever the Squiddies or whatever the official name is. I don't even know if they have names. And the default character for that game appears to be female. And uh, something we mentioned back then is like, and there are male characters, but they're all male and female. Uh, check out PFYCO Pass. I have no. Is that an anime, Matthew? Um, uh, I but, think it's Psycho Pass is what he was trying to go for. Oh. PS instead of PF. Um, <clears throat> uh, so you know they have male and female characters, which is great. But we did notice it was uh, you know pretty much all white characters. Of course, very early development game. Uh, we had a Nintendo Direct this week with a new trailer for Splatoon, and there are. Uh, all kinds of different uh, shades, skin tones that uh, appear in that game. So good on you, Nintendo, and good awesome. on other uh, publishers and developers who are actually uh, making strides to uh, for diversity in uh, characters in video games. It's really cool to see. Yeah, definitely. I, I'm, you know, today, you know, this, you know, now is a great time to be a, a gamer if you're very interested in diversity, and it's only going to get better from here, you know, it's, uh, yeah, there, there's, there's really no turning back from, from what they, what, what's happening now, and, and, uh, and to be honest, despite the complaints of all the jerks out there, you know, there, there's, you know, it's just going to get more diverse from here on out, and, uh, and, uh, you know, uh, Overwatch is is a, a good example of that. So mm -hmm. uh, it's, like, it's also I, really I colorful it. too, and I like that. Yes, very colorful. I I, I think I, I like that kind of art way better than the grim and gritty, realistic crap that uh, you know comes in Battlefield and Call of Duty stuff. You know this bright colors and and uh, you know and stuff just looks great. It's fun to look at. Yeah, and, and uh, so it's definitely something that I would probably see myself playing a lot. If well, it sometimes it, it you know, the, the grim, the gritty, the gray, and the oppressively bleak environments, sometimes they really do serve a point. For Zach, uh, the, the Metro Last Light, which came out a year or two ago, mm -hmm. is kind of a, a very gray and brown shooter, but 
um, that's part and parcel to the environment and the, uh, the, the, the feeling and tone that that particular game is going for. So I felt it, it was very appropriate, and they do find ways to vary the environments and, um, yeah. and uh, you, know, you know, add some really atmospheric and interesting locations and architectures. So, yeah. so yes, I, I, I play things other than Nintendo games. <laughs> Don't Damn. you know? Um, I actually wrote the guide for that one, I think. Didn't I? Yeah, I think I did. <clears throat> so, okay. So, uh, any final thoughts before we wrap this up? Uh, I think that's all I have. <laughs> and we're running on an hour and a half now, so we probably yeah, should yeah, wrap we... up. <laughs> just... yeah, that, that's the problem with being a fanboy, is you, you just kind of ramble. Exactly. <laughs> My mom loves that about me when I talk her ear off about things she doesn't know or care about. <laughs> she likes video games, but uh, and she plays them. Uh, she has a you know she plays uh, PC games and she uh, plays 3DS. But you know she she's not as into it as I am. Um, so anyway, uh, let's uh, close out the show. My name's Andrew Eisen. E I S E N is how you spell the last name. And you'll want to know that if you try to find me on Twitter, or Facebook, or YouTube, just type it into YouTube. You'll uh, find all my silly videos. Uh, I'll try to do some more, uh, more than just uh, uploading my uh, charity Extra Life uh, Twitch stream. Uh, I have some ideas for videos, and hopefully, I'll have the time to do them. Uh, at Andrew Eisen is the Twitter handle. Facebook is just uh, Andrew Eisen YouTube. And um, still trying to determine if I'm going to continue doing a uh, tw uh, Twitch stream. You know, on a weekly basis, uh, there are some, uh, there are time concerns, and there are also financial concerns. So I, I'm still weighing the pros and cons. So uh, you know, hit me up on uh, YouTube or Facebook or Twitter if you, you know, want me to do that, or if you're like, oh, for the love of God, stay off of Twitch. You're terrible at it. You know, <laughs> whatever you're thinking, let me know. Uh, Zachary, plug away. All right, you can follow me on Twitter at Easy Night, and you can also check out uh, DK underscore Gaming for all my game development work. Uh, it's DivineNightGaming.com. You can check out on Twitter OK Game Devs and uh, OKGameDev.com for all the news about the Oklahoma game development scene. Um, I try to keep it updated, and uh, I've been falling behind the past few weeks, so hopefully the next couple of weeks I can catch up on some interesting developments there. And if you're interested in just me rambling on about various things and every once in a while, check out randomtower.com. And uh, so that's where you can find me. All right. You've been listening to Super Podcast Action Committee, episode 121. We do this every single week, except for the weeks we don't. But it's pretty much every single week. Uh, every Saturday, 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time at gamepolitics.com. So, uh, we'll see you back next year. Oh, uh, uh, hang on, let me move this up. Oh, look at that. Um, send us email at superpackpodcast at gmail.com. <laughs> Follow us on Twitter at superpackpodcast. Subscribe and rate us on iTunes and like us on Facebook. We've been doing 121 of these. You'd think I'd have that memorized by now. Uh, <laughs> but I don't. What do you think? <laughs> I, that, that space in my brain is reserved for other more important things, like cat videos. <laughs> So, all right, <clears throat> we are out of here. Have an excellent week, everyone, and we will see you next time in episode 122. Take care. All right, see ya. <laughs>